Hey, what's going on guys? Phil here, and we are back to cover the next free mech, and that is the Grasshopper 5H, and this is for March 11th, 2021 through April 6th of 2021. This is going to be the lucky part of the Lucky Charms event, and for those that aren't familiar, Lucky Charms event is fantastic it's where you get a bunch of free stuff just for playing, so that's always good. So they've made it a part of that, and of course there's two phases to the Lucky Charms event. Of course, the first one starts on the 11th, and then the second one starts on the 18th, and well one of the results is you get the grasshopper but also some other other stuff for the grasshopper like uh you know uh, you can choose a camo which is really cool and again for new players coming in this is a great all-around mech i've used it for years it's benefited from the uh lfes that have came into the game like fusion engines for those that are new and of course like heavy ppc builds of course there are other setups that have sort of came through the time and that's large lasers ear large large pulse builds um, and of course ERPPC and mediums and large pulse medium pulse and so forth and so on so what I'm going to do is I uh, I'm, I'm going to showcase some builds that I asked uh, a few individuals what their favorite build was for the 5h and we're going to go ahead and go over those so hopefully when you see this video when the mech comes out you'll have a plethora of choices to choose from from builds and from players that have already been playing this mech for quite some time and know the strengths and weaknesses. And speaking of strengths, this actually chassis has a few. It's slender, even though it's tall, that isn't a detriment. High mounts, pretty much right where the cockpit is are two high mounts that you can utilize heavy PVCs or large poles and mediums. It's got jump capability, it allows you to be able to keep up uh, on Kenya network on the rotation, but for real, that agility is quite nice. For a 70 tonner, it's quite mobile, all right? Again, um, you will see builds out there that use XL engines on the grasshoppers as well. So don't be shy to experiment outside of these builds, but I just wanna let you know, this is a solid, heavy IS mech. I mean, really all around, uh, it's one of those where it's performed even at the highest level. You've seen the grasshopper um, at the world championship being used as well. So just sort of keep that in mind. It does have its flaws, of course, with low mounts in the uh, torso and the arms, but those high mounts, especially if you're doing a uh, PPC build, can be quite advantageous. If you can see it, you can shoot it. And of course, you add on the fact of you can pop tart with it with jump jets. So anyways, let's go ahead and dive into the builds that we have here and break down what possible builds you may find very useful in the near future. First up, we have the heavy PPC build. Now there's a variety out there, but one important thing to notice is it really matters as far as the weapon placement. And what I mean by that is if you notice, both of these heavy PPCs are high mounted. This is actually done by manipulating the hardpoint system and placing a medium laser first. If you happen to place the heavy PPC first, you will notice it will go down to the waistline. So just keep that in mind. We can go ahead and hit reset here that the heavy PPCs always are mounted secondary after the medium laser, and that is to put them high above. We've got a light engine 300 with two double heat sinks uh, included with that, four jump jets, a AMS with one ton of ammo in the leg, and of course, a backup of three medium lasers. This chassis is all about maneuverability with a top speed of 69.4 kph. You could increase that in the skill tree, but again, that is up to you in your play style. I prefer uh, firepower and survivability and then operations to also enhance my capability of firing those dual heavy PPCs. These are mounted high. So again, as I mentioned, the secret to this is if you can see it, you can shoot it. You need to remain uh, mobile. You need to, if it, if it means rotating with uh, the NASCAR, you rotate. Uh, but keep in mind with those heavy peeps you do have a minimum range of 90 meters so you want to keep those lights and mediums at bay and do not let them close with the speed that you do get with this you're able to pretty much keep up with i would say with the normal speed of rotation uh, and of course you do have jump jets so this is a perfect build for everybody out there and of course the ams is just sort of a nice little uh, touch on um, the lrms and atms that you see out there it's not going to protect against everything but if a few people have ams it can help with that uh, rain from above one thing to also note about this particular build and of course all of these the codes will be down below in the description is that left arm you'll notice has two double heat sinks and the armor value is higher than the other one thing is to protect with your right 
and that means shield with your right arm so that way you're not losing that left uh, arm right away you can shift things around that's totally up to you if you want equal distribution on both arms and one double heat sink you can do that but in this particular build this player uh, gave to me this is the setup they use and of course their experience with it has seen success moving on to the next setup we have the large laser setup this is actually three large with a backup of four uh, ER mediums with ER mediums coming in here again the optimal range increase from 360 to around 399 which puts that a little bit behind as far as the uh, uh, large lasers are concerned but it's a good mixture here obviously a little bit different setup the same runs true on all of these which is endo steel and double heat sinks all of them use standard armor there's not enough crit space because of all these doubles um we have a 325 with three double heat sinks internal only one jump jet on this and again it's not going to be as jumpy and bouncy as the previous one with the heavy ppcs um, but you have good sustainability with this again the uh three large lasers keep in mind that just like before you do want to place the er medium first and then the large laser okay so just sort of uh we're gonna save that there now there are a few variations out there where you'll see three large one in the ct and this er medium gets moved to the right torso again that's really up to you as a player but all around this is a little bit more of a laser vomit setup um of plenty of double heat sinks again 1.28 with operations will keep your heat capacity and cooling um you know uh, at the highest tick rate it can so um, I've, I've used this setup uh, throughout the years. This has been something I actually used the large pulse version as well with mediums or medium pulse. This is a pretty standard affair across the board. This is what you'll see out there being used by a lot of people. Speaking of large pulse, the main difference here that you're gonna see between this and the large laser setup is the engine. Uh, instead of a 325, you're gonna have a 300. And of course, because large pulse are a bit heavier, uh, coming in at uh, seven tons compared to the five that's where you're gonna have to get your weight savings so again large pulse a little bit quicker uh burst damage uh, there but all together um i think you'll find both very similar uh large lasers have a little bit longer burn duration but so do those er mediums whereas this is followed up with medium lasers with the large pulse with a little bit shorter range uh keep in mind that uh, again um the setup here you'll want to reverse this and put the large pulse so it's up top so again i can't stop iterating that just wanted to showcase it again how important that is to make sure the top one you don't want your large pulse down here obviously on the right side you don't really have a choice here um, another thing to sort of uh showcase with these builds is the right side sort of heavy dominant which means you can poke on the right side and engage with your dual large pulse and the medium and the uh, medium in the CT, because you are going to be exposing at least this side of your uh, torso. So keep that in mind. Moving on to a build a lot of people are familiar with is the five year large setup. Now, of course, if you know anything, you'll notice this little indicator that says firing more than three large lasers simultaneously will result in a heat spike higher than normal. That is your only warning about ghost heat or heat scale limit and that is for a reason this build is set up to fire three and then two or th three and then two uh, alternatively these are high mounts across the board all of it is in the torso you have nothing in the arms so again these are shields and obviously heat sink dumps we have a light 300 again indo and double nothing different from the others other than of course the weapons themselves this has an optimal range if you have uh, the normal setup in the skill tree of over 720 some odd 750 meters uh, so again being able to reach out and touch your targets now this can run very hot but in a good player's hands and again uh, out there you need to you know practice is firing uh have the first group of uh three and then have the second group of three so when you fire the first group it's going to fire three when you fire the second one it's only going to be firing two keep in mind you want to give a slight like point point five uh, second duration between firing those groups so you don't initiate ghost heat because you will if you don't and uh, that's not fun and it's not going to net you anything positive there so make sure to check this one out this one again is really really nice on those open long range maps there are some quite uh, good uh, places even on Kenya Network surprisingly for those that have been around for a while that uh, uh, Termaline Desert and so forth if you and a partner or three or a group can get the range and set up these can be 
become quite effective. Um, almost as effective as the your PPCs that you see going around. And again, um, being able to be pinpoint accurate, uh, you know, out there as well. So check this out. This is a setup, again, you've seen all the way to the World Championships. Um, and of course, you see it in everyday play. It does take some getting used to, but the nice thing with this is you have the jump capacity, you have the agility, and you have the speed, and you only really have to worry about your torso. So just sort of keep that in mind. You can also set these up to where uh, the two on the top are your uh, group one and then everything else is group two as well but just sort of the the whole idea is fire three and then when you go to fire the next weapon group it has three of them in it but you've already fired one so it only shoots two and you don't have to worry about ghost teeth so just keep that in mind this is a really good setup for anybody out there if you haven't given this a try it can be quite effective you will be weak against light mechs so just sort of keep that in mind uh, and of course you do want to be that scalp up range shooting at those lights open torsos or legs so just keep that in mind this is not a good anti-light and last but not least is a setup i haven't really used myself so take this with a grain of salt it is five large pulse similar to what we just talked about with the five year large this does have the ghost heat uh, uh, issue which is firing more than three at a time so apply the same rules that we just talked about with uh, the ear largest but to this it has all the same strengths high mounts you only have to worry about the torso to set up your weapon groups uh weapon group one one two three and then weapon group one two three and then you can even have a chain fire for a third um this does bring it down a bit the other ones are rolling around 69 kph this is rolling 62. additionally because this is an xl 270 you are vulnerable here to a side torso destruction um, and of course you have less heat dissipation because you don't have any extra internal uh, uh mounted uh, or external technically mounted double heat sinks to the engine so the heat efficiency is a little bit lower but this is something that you will see out there and a good player you can even roll around with a cool shot or two um, and you really what you're doing is you're looking for that burst damage uh, going for those uh, uh targets of opportunity and left and right so again this is a setup that i was given uh, i have not used this it seems a little bit hot for me but i figured i'd toss it out there uh, considering the person who gave it to me uh, seemed to enjoy it. So uh, keep that in mind. You do have quite a bit of survivability, again, with this chassis. Uh, I would say it's relatively XL friendly out there. That uh, ER large setup would probably uh, possibly be a better, um, you know, um, what better fit for it, I would say. But uh, anyways, regardless, this is a, a mech that's going to be rolling around. And again, you can use the arms for shields here, almost full armor on those. So there's that this is my setup this is actually what i've had on the 5h for years now and of course i've updated it with the uh, light fusion engine when they came out um, i do have an uh, an lfe 325 in here this is the dual large pulse five medium laser with ams um, I enjoy this setup. I think it's an overall just good performer. I don't have amazing necessarily matches in it, but I never have bad matches in it. Again, good good set of speed, 75 kph here uh, with the setup I have. Um, I just really enjoy it. So again, maybe you find this successful. Maybe you find some of the other builds successful. Let me know down in the comments below if you have a setup yourself maybe that wasn't covered here or again i think you can substitute a lot of the setups that we've seen the dual heavy peep uh, can be substituted with your uh, ppcs as well you can do normal ppcs just keep in mind that of course that does alter the build the tonnage and so forth um, but the one thing that's really nice about the grasshopper is pretty versatile it's going to be energy for the most part no one's going to use the uh head um you know missile hard point that's uh used no one really uses that uh you do have of course the hero but that one's uh different but uh for the 5h this is a fantastic uh setup i've used it forever i think it's been um you know it's again it's a sort of mainstay of uh you know my my uh, mech bay as far as i've never really switched it up um but I will be showcasing some of these builds on my stream. Speaking of stream, I do stream Monday through Friday, 12 to 6 p.m. Eastern. You should join us. It's quite some fun, and I get to hang out with you guys and answer questions live, and I get to find out some new stuff, and sometimes I'm able to impart some of my uh, wisdom, if you will, or information, uh, or stories, or rants, depending on who you ask. Uh, so anyways, make sure to join us on Twitch. I'll have a link down below, but for those that are wondering, twitch.tv forward slash NGNGTV. I hope to see you there. But that's going to be it for the Grasshopper. Again, I think this is a really smart choice that they made. 
I think it's user friendly out there. I think this is a great setup for a lot of new players that are coming into the game. All they really have to worry about is two weapon groups, fire one, fire two, and then you can always just set up an easy chain fire on group three as well, or even just split it from there. It's easy to understand, mount high. If you can see it, you can shoot it. You know, good maneuverability. It's got good top speed, good agility across the board, and it has jump jets so they won't find themselves in a weird place where they can't get out of, like Canyon Network or any of the other maps with uh, with verticality to it. Yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And of course, let me know if you find any of these builds useful for the upcoming uh, free mech coming out, of course, March 11th for in 2021. Quick shout out to all of you guys out there that are already supporters and are viewing the content. If you like what I do, consider becoming a patron today. It really means the world. It helps me be able to focus on content. So again, if you have the ability, check it out and never apologize if you can't or just don't want to. That's going to be it for this video. Hope you found it informative. Let me know in the comments down below. Until next time.